I did a thing. Are you ready? Are you ready to see this thing I did? Ah! <laughs> I cut my hair. Um, actually, so it's funny because I get, I was getting a lot of comments about my hair being distracting. And it's just funny because it's like, okay, does, does anybody remember the, where we've kind of gone through this really weird, like six months. Um, and honestly, I was due for a haircut right before the whole shutdown thing. And then that happened. And then, yeah, so I literally just got my haircut for the first time since December. And um, funny thing is, I couldn't get into my normal place. She still wasn't seeing clients. So I took a chance and I went to a salon inside of a Walmart. And a guy was super nice and everything. But I told him take off just a couple inches. And he like, he chopped it like way up. And you know, and by the time they start and they go, is that good? It's too late. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's go. Um, so yeah, wow, look at all you guys over there. Oh, I see faces I have not seen for a while. That's fun. Hello, hello. We got Shanda and uh, Super Mommy Shark Queen, Faithfully Finds, Unfinished Vintage, Annette. I'm not going to say last names. I butcher last names. Uh, Judy, first time here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Terry Ann's Eclectic, this and that. Uh, let's see. Uh, you guys are talking, talking, talking. I see Ed Miller over there. Sheila, Helen. Christina, hey, or Christine, sorry, I threw an A on the end of your name. Good to see you here. Rags1602, Jenny, Trish, Shefab Thrifts, Sarah. Oh, I love when you put a real name there too. Casey ATX, Anne Marie, of course, uh, Annette Miller. Yay, 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 Anne Marie. Oh, I already said you. <laughs> so, Welcome, everyone. Oh, so exciting to see you all here. I'm almost to the point. Margaret, I see you. I'm almost to the point. I need to get some people in as uh, moderators over there to kind of help keep an eye on things. Hey, if you're a regular on this Monday time frame live at 1 o'clock and you would like to help out over in the chat, uh, just shoot me a message. Let me know. Don't send me a message on like in the chat here. I might miss it because it's a separate thing. Um, but over on Facebook, if we are Facebook friends or even if we're not, I check my non-friend messages. But um, hit me up over on Facebook. <coughs> Sorry. How do they always do that? I think I just got a package delivered. Uh, but hit me up over on Facebook and I can add you in as an admin here that way if we get any riffraff you can uh, make them go away I'm really I'm going to don't ever get a chihuahua <laughs> and if you have a chihuahua you know what I'm talking about Peter, that's enough okay um, she is a barker that one is a Barker. If I don't hear the doorbell, for sure, she lets me know. I don't need a doorbell. I've got Peanut. Okay. Woof. All right. Um, so many of you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that It, the hair looks good. Oh, you like, I never actually, I never actually dyed it partly black. Um, I actually used to diet it wasn't actually black I mean, it was it was close to black it was a very 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 dark color and that was actually like I dyed my hair and then about three years ago I made the decision when I became single mom um, I made the decision not to dye my hair anymore for a couple of reasons for um, to be healthier, uh, I'm very much on the path of eliminating as many chemicals from my life as possible. Um, 
cancer runs in my family, so I don't want to give it any opportunity that it doesn't already have. So I decided no more chemicals on the head. And also, uh, I wanted to save that, you know, 100 bucks every couple of months. So that was a big factor, too. And then as it, as it got going, I just got used to it. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. I like not dyeing my hair. So that's that's the hair story. Like, you really just wanted to hear that. Okay, we got a lot of stuff. Um, I shopped. I, I, okay, so I'll back up a little bit. I have a friend here in Las Vegas who had decided to close her 12,000 square foot um, consignment antique shop. She does estate sales, and then she... Um, brings the stuff in that doesn't sell at the estate sale and she's filled her shop and I think she's been open for about 30 years. I actually did a video when she was doing a 50% off sale. I'll have to go find that and, and maybe link it in the description because everything is being liquidated on auctions that she's doing now. And so I purchased a bunch of stuff from one of her auctions. The name of the store is not just Antiques Mart. They're not open for business to the public right now. They are strictly liquidating through auctions. So, um, and they will ship. So I will put a link down in the description of their current auctions. I know that kind of means that I'm creating my own competition, but that's okay. Um, but what do you do, right? Don't pay more than you want to pay for something. I'll just say that. Um, so I have all of this stuff that I have not gone through yet. Now, I did just a little bit of research as I was bidding on things. So I didn't go in totally blind because there was no preview. I literally had to buy this from pictures and very, very limited descriptions. And that's the cool thing about developing a niche is it makes it possible for you to take some of those risks with a little more education than say somebody who doesn't deal in this stuff on a day to day basis. So thank you guys for the kind comments about the hair because it was really I I'm still in a little bit of shock as to how short it is. It was not my intention to go this short. So I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. And, and believe me, being now like on YouTube with a growing channel, you, well, I was going to say you'd be surprised, but you guys probably wouldn't be surprised that people leave really ugly, nasty comments and they are pretty insulting. And a lot of them were around my hair and my teeth. And my teeth, I can't do anything about. I had a dentist botch my front two teeth at one point, And so they are like permanently discolored. And that's another thing. I won't use like harsh chemicals to try to whiten them. I do, I mean, I do the baking soda and I do some of the natural stuff to, to try to, to get them as white as I can. But um, I'm pretty much looking at if I want white teeth, I have to get veneers and that's not in my budget right now. So I you know I'm like, I told you, I'm an open book, you guys. I, you know, that's why it's a little bit hard for me to get some of the nasty comments because it, it, it baffles me how people can just go around doing that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I, I'm, huh. I know, and we're living in this time, you know, with social media that, what do you call, it? like Facebook warriors, you know, would they say this stuff in real life? Are people that miserable that they have to go out and attack other people they don't even know? I don't get it. I don't get it. And I have other close YouTube friends that go through the same thing, like, and I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. But um, you guys are all, you all, you're my peeps right here though. I don't get the nasty comments from you guys. So that's why I'm like saying this. Now there's going to be people, people who watch this after the fact that will leave me some nasty comments, but all right, I'll take it. 
My skin's getting a little thicker by the day. <laughs> ah, my mom just showed up. I had to take care of those doggies. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's jump into some stuff here. Oh, what do I want to start with? Okay, you know what? I've got my little invoice next to me. So I actually bought some furniture, which I can't show you, but I bought these Art Deco bookshelves. Get this. I paid $7.00 and $12, about two, two different prices. But literally I spent less than $20 on two Art Deco bookcases. Pretty excited about that. So this, of course it's way behind me. Let me grab her. I got this porcelain cherub. Now, I think it's supposed to be, it's got a piece of tape on it. I'll show you in a second here. All right. Um, I think, no, it's not supposed to be. Okay. I'm trying to figure this thing out. Okay. So it's coming off its base. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. Because there's a loose. I'm trying to figure this thing out, guys. There's like a loose flower, but yet it's wired in. So I'm wondering if it was supposed to be like a music box or something, or it's just was wired in that way. I don't know. There's like this one loose piece here that I can't. Oh, I'm not even showing you. I see there's this loose piece in here but it's wired in um this is old i mean it's old now oh i wonder if it was meant to be a, uh, there's a hole on the back i don't know what that's about i'm kind of now thinking maybe it was a lamp like a night light i don't know but it's bisque now you hear the terms like porcelain Bisque, ceramic, pottery. Um, this is bisque. And the reason you can tell bisque is it's like a matte porcelain. It is, um, it's not shiny. It's got a very delicate texture to it. Um, bisque was used a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a hundred years ago. Um, I would probably date this piece to pre-1930s, I'm going to say. That would be my guess. Um, now, how do I look this up? Oh, by the way, I paid I paid $6 for this little baby. Um, so again, sometimes I buy things just to take a risk and learn more about them. Oh, so, so porcelain is shiny. Porcelain has been glazed and fired and bisque has not been glazed. I guess that's a good way to, to tell the difference. And then pottery is a clay. It's a heavier material and it can come with a whole variety of different glazes on it. And ceramic, ceramic to me is like, you know, like you get the, the plain white pieces that you paint and then fire. And then it, it, to me, that's a ceramic. Ceramic is a, a more modern porcelain, as it were. It's not as thick as pottery. It's not as thin as porcelain. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I am going to show my screen Boop. And I will enlarge this once I get results so you can see it a little better. Okay, so I know I have a bisque. I'm going to say angel instead of cherub. And I know it's sitting on a tree branch. So I'm just going to put bisque, angel, tree. And I am going to sort by highest first because I am hoping this is a very valuable item. And I'm in actives first because I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. Except, boy, that looks pretty darn close, doesn't it? So I'm going to pull it. Now, this one's reading a book. But what I'm doing is seeing if I can get any more information out of this listing and see what they say. And no, no information there. So there is one. For 25 bucks but that still doesn't give me enough information 
to go higher. And I want to be able to go higher if I can. It's always the goal to get the most money as possible for the item. Um, now I'm going to go back and I am going to look in the solds. Hmm. So I may take out the word tree. Bisque angel. Let's just go bisque angel. Oh, we only have 501 results. Now I know there's also brass on the bottom of this. So I might. And oh, I promised I would go bigger so you could see it better. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So maybe I will try cherub. Let's go cherub. Bisque cherub. And see what we get. So I always love looking at the highest results just to see the great stuff that is out there. All right, not not finding. Although it's kind of similar kind of to this piece, but not quite. But what this tells me is I can probably list this for $49.99 and be just fine. This boy looks like the same face and the same flowers. I wonder if it is left in. I'll pull that one up so you can see it a little better. And sometimes I do that. It's like, hmm, is it the same face? Same flowers? Looks very, very close. Isn't it? Looks like the same. Now this one would have had, you know, stickers and stuff. But this is mounted on a brass base. So I'm kind of wondering, did it originally go on that base? I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully, I put the right words in and someone will find it. Okay, so that's about all of the research I will do. I will call it an antique bisque cherub angel in tree with music scroll. And uh, let the pictures then speak for themselves and let the price, or I might actually run it on auction. You know, if I ever wonder if something is a valuable piece, I will run it on auction. And uh, I will start at probably like, you know, $29.99. So I'll, I'll start it less than I would put it at fixed price. Um, but I'll put it, put it at a price that I would be okay if it sold for that price. Because a lot of stuff does sell at the opening bid. So, all right. That's that. And I'm actually, I'm checking this off my little list just so I know I got it. All right. Murano Glass Candy Bowl. Murano. Oh. This one. Uh, I love this piece. So um, this does not quite have the spectacular colors that some of these uh, black Murano pieces do. And now that I have it in my hands, I'm actually questioning whether this truly is a Murano piece. So I'm going to show you a picture of what I think thought it was. Now it's it's definitely vintage because I can see the age on the pontal, which I'll, I'll show you in again in a second. So um, I'm going to show you. Okay. And I'm just going to pull up the screen as big as I can. I wonder if I, oh, you know what? Oh, wrong one. Let me do this screen. Hold on, I'm trying to make it. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Let me know if that's a little better. I just kind of blew up the screen. In fact, I think I can do. I can do one more. Is that better? Oh, there we go. I blew up the screen for you. Cool beans. Okay, so this I put in Murano Tutti Fruity. There is a Murano Tutti Fruity pattern made by. Um, Avem, A-V-E-M, is who makes that. It is mid-century. It is absolutely fan 
fantastic glass. And I was hoping when I bid on this piece and won it for $15 that I would have a piece of this um, AV, a, AVEM Murano. I, those initials stand for something which I cannot think of right off the top of my head. But you can see how amazing this stuff is. Um, but it's really, really intricate. Now, I do see some that isn't quite as exciting as those top results. So this very well could still be, I mean, it's, it's kind of on line with this one. Um, but it's not going to fetch the price that the truly spectacular ones do. But I can certainly double my money on it. I'm not even worried about that. And that's one of the things I want to just mention. Even when you buy something that doesn't turn out to be as valuable as you thought it was, make sure you're still at the, at the range where even if it doesn't turn out to be the fantastic item, you can still make your money back and a little profit. That makes sense. I know what I was trying to say, but I'm not sure it came out that way. Let me come back. Let me come back and make sure everybody's with me on that. So meaning I paid $15 for this knowing that no matter what, just on the basis of it being a black piece of glass in Murano style, I could get 30 bucks for it. There, that I think that explains it. But my hope is that it was a 50 or $60 piece. I don't think it is. I think it's probably a 30 to $40 piece. But it is cool. Just doesn't have that oomph that I was hoping it would have. And that's what happens when you buy off an online auction sometimes. Okay, next is this little darling. This little darling right here. This is uh, by an artist named Sibis. See if that'll focus in on here. I'll cover my face and hopefully it'll focus. Sibis, very tiny little mark. And this, uh, I did look this up and I will show you what Sibis if I'm saying that right, it's very possible I'm saying it wrong. I think it's French. Is it French or Italian? C-Y-B-I-S. Anybody know? Is that French or Italian? You've never found Murano in the wild. Ooh. Um, I don't find it at thrift stores. I find it at estate sales, auctions and yard sales sometimes. But yeah, I haven't found true Murano at thrift stores. No. So don't be discouraged. Um, yeah, it is pretty. Oh, tiger purple. So you had a Murano piece. Not sure if you still have it. Well, find that Murano piece. Let's see it. Let's see it. And, and so if anybody is not already over in the Niche to Profit Facebook group, come join us over there. That's where you can post pictures, get help identifying, talk about eBay struggles, all that good stuff. We talk about that. I'm over there. It's the easiest place to get questions answered. Sometimes questions are asked like in the video comments and I get so many comments that it can get missed and I don't want to miss them. You found the fruits and the veggies. Yeah. Yeah. I found those at thrift shops. Yep. Yep. There was one black Murano 2D Fruity Dish at the end of your list there. Um, I'm not sure what there was there was a bunch of them. But was there one in particular you thought looked like it? Oh, Margaret, I am so jealous. You got to go to the Murano Island 14 years ago and watch them blow glass. Ah, that is on my bucket list. Although I don't think they are working right now. I'm pretty sure they are not making any glass right now. So 
if they don't reopen back up, that can mean a big deal for, for Murano out there. So might want to be picking it up because it's going to be selling for the true collectors who realize what's going on. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Sally Crafter, you are so welcome. I do. I try to answer the questions. I really do. Okay. So I just did a search for Sibis. Let me share my screen again here. And I always sort by highest first because I want to know what's selling for the biggest price, not the lowest. So you can see this brand is a good one. This is a very good brand. Now I'm showing you this, but then I we're going to get more realistic on the actual piece that I bought that I paid $13 for. So keep that in mind. But this is kind of what I would did a really quick search because if something's on a timer and you're trying to make a determination whether to buy, you know, do your sort, go through, say, oh, you know what? This is a good brand. Uh, I can take a chance at $13 because uh, this stuff sells really well. So you see all this, right? I'm going to go up now and because what I have is a bust, and a bust is simply where it's like the neck up. So it's not one of those. Get down here and you can see a little more realistic pricing here. Oh, I guess this is from Eros and Psyche. Interesting. So it's a thing. Huh. But this is more the pricing that I saw. Um, for the heads was in the 40 to $50 range, which is what I thought that I would be able to sell this for. But now I'm intrigued. Eros, he's Eros. Who knew? From 1974. Now notice this one was $35, but it was an auction format. And I wonder, let me just peek real quick. See, it says there was two bids. So here's a lesson. This happened because there was only one bidder. The opening bid was $34.99. That bidder was willing to go higher. But with an auction, you have to have at least two people willing to bid on the items. So that's why you need to be willing to take the opening bid if it sells for that. Um, but that also tells me that it is worth more than $35 because that person would have paid more. So I would probably list mine like $49.99 and, and see where we go. Um, Cause it is interesting and it's Sibis and there you go. All right. Okay. So these were described as Clarice Cliff style, smiling pups, salt and pepper. So now as I look at them, and I will let you look at them too. These are not salt and peppers. They're not salt and peppers at all. What? How could they do that? Oh, because that happens at auctions. Um, yeah, that's weird. It looks like there was originally cork across the bottom. Like, oh, it's on this one. I have this mirror image thing going on and it's really weird sometimes. So see, that's cork remnant on there. Um, and he's got a, Oh, this poor guy. He needs some, he needs some surgery. Look, he's got something stuck all over him, which looks like it's not covering up anything bad. Yay. Eros bust on Etsy for $95. What? Of course, that's not a sold price. That's just a listed for price. But yeah, so maybe, maybe I need to up it up a little bit. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sweet. Uh, let's see. So what do you do when you get an offer that is lower than all recent solds? I feel like I price my items low, but still have no sales some weeks. It's discouraging. Counter. I do. I, in fact, I just had one recently. What was it? Oh gosh. What was the item? There was an item. I, I can't remember what it was, but I was the only one who had that item. Now I looked at similar ones and there were some that had gone as low as $30 and the buyer was offering me $30, but 
none of them were like the one that I had and there was no other ones like I had listed so I did counter that at $39.99 and they accepted so don't don't okay here let me just don't ever feel bad about running your business and setting your pricing and accepting the pricing that you feel comfortable with this is your business people are always going to ask you to take lower it is a fact in retail but you do not have to and you do not have to feel guilty if you don't now I do those determinations based on how long I've had the item how much I paid for it and whether it is more advantageous to lower the price and sell it online or lower the price and sell it in person and not have to pay a commission so there is that there is a point where it goes below where I'm going to sell it online because time is money and you have to take into consideration that the amount of time it took for you to list and what it's going to take you to ship the item so you have to figure out for yourself what that number is I set mine my my um, desired I was trying to think of that word my desired profit margin is twenty dollars that's when I'm out sourcing and when I'm deciding whether to pay for something is can I make twenty dollars on this item and I don't always get there you know it's I'm not always going to get the twenty dollars but if I'm shooting for that I reach it more often than not so that is my average overall yeah Oh, no, you're totally fine. Now, interrupt what you know what that's what this show is for because your questions cause me to kind of help, you know, with things that are going on in your guys' minds. Um, how much inventory should you start with? I have a lot of inventory and only eight items listed. So I'm going to say list, list, list. Uh, I don't think you can have too much inventory listed. The key is consistency. The key is daily listing if you can. Like uh, if you have 30 items and you only have one day a week to, to do your listing, don't list them all on that day. Spread it out. Schedule your listings. Um, get them all up and in draft mode because then each day you could just pop in and make a couple of drafts go live. So, you know, but daily, daily really helps the search engines bring you up because now it's all about, you know, relevance for search engines. Yeah. Yep. Not sure what to charge on your Eros vase in green. I would say pop over to the Facebook group and show us a picture. We can help you the, with that. All right. Okay, so let's go back to these little guys. Um, now, the clue that I was given was that uh, Clary Cliff's style smiling pups I only paid well I did pay $12 for these which is a little more than I thought but but here you're gonna see why I pay that because I took the term Clary's clip and dog and no exact found so let's look in active no exact bounds. So something is off. So I don't know where they get the Clary's Cliff part, but let's go. Smiling dog. Oh man, too many results. So let's go over here to souls. And let's go into collectibles. All right. Now we're going to get some weird stuff in here because I did not fine-tune it down but I'm looking for something similar so here's some smiling cats um, still so again auctions can say stuff and they are not held to it because they expect you to do your own research um, this could be one of those things where it's totally totally off okay so not finding what I need based on that so I'm going to go with 
gosh, I don't even know what to call these. Um, they are vintage white spotted dog. Ha, it's not a it's not a Dalmatian. The spotted might get me there. I'm really just trying to not to get come back with like a hundred gazillion results. So I tell you now that I have spent this much time looking at these, what I will probably do, eh, it kind of has that kind of a look to it. I will put these on auction. Now I know what I paid. I paid $12. So I will start them probably at $19.99. So they're, if they sell it opening bid, I'm good with that. But if they are truly valuable, uh, somebody will find them. But I suspect they're worth about 20 bucks. So the Clary's Cliff part, salt and pepper, that got me. They got me on that one. But it's okay. Because I want to do, and they're cute. So never go wrong. Yeah, I get asked if I use Google image search all the time. And honestly, um, since people were asking me that, I went the other day and I tried to use it. And it just... I don't know what it is about this kind of stuff. It really doesn't bring back relevant results. So it kind of drives me crazy. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure they're dogs. No, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain they're, I don't, yeah, they're dogs. The way they're sitting, the ears, pretty sure they're dogs. I think that's, yeah, and it's got a tail. See the tail kind of wrapped around there. That's a doggy. Yeah, I think, yeah, they're dogs. They're dogs. They're dogs. Um, they're probably made in Japan. And uh, they're not any particular breed. They're just a, you know, little generic mutt dog. Okay, so we got those. Now, I'm going to come back to those. Moriage, four inches tall. What is that? What is the Moriage? Is it? Oh, must be this set. It's the only thing I got that's got Moriage. Moriage is this texture. I forget how they do it. I looked it up once. It's um, it's a little layer that they put after the item is is fired. Now there's there's three little plates. Those. They're saucers without teacups, so not a huge amount of value there. But there is a little creamer and sugar, and I'm going to try to show you that moriage. It'll see the little beading. Yeah. Um, these are made in Japan, um, hand painted, made in Japan is all that the mark says. You can see that they're. I mean, probably Nippon Noritake back before they had, you know, to mark things. No, oh, they had them for $29 in their store. Um, but it's a really nice little set. I would date these to about mm, late 20s, early 30s. It's kind of got, it's, it's that time period where Art Deco was turning into Art Nouveau. It's got that styling. So I paid five dollars. How can you go wrong at five dollars, right? So um, to look these up, I will oh, share my screen so you can see me look them up. Uh, let's put. I know if I just put creamer and sugar and put, let's just try putting in the moriage and see what happens. Ah, I only got 13 results to look through. It is not dragonware, not dragonware. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, this is very, oh, this is dragonware. No, nope, it's not similar. Okay, so let's look at, um, it is luster wear also. This iridescence on here is luster wear. So we can look at those results. 
this is the most common luster wear pattern out there. And you'll see this a lot at the thrift stores, this, this blue and peach. And it's okay. It sells. Um, but sometimes you have to put a lot of pieces together. So you have to consider that hassle factor. So still not finding anything really similar. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. I love when it's not easy to find. I know that sounds like counterintuitive, but if you have trouble finding the item that you are selling, that might be a good candidate for an auction. Okay, so um, I'm taking the tape off, you know, live here in the show because I just have to because that's what my OCD does. I'm kind of looking inside to just make sure they're not chipped or cracked or anything, and they're not. This is a nice little set. So I will start these on auction probably at 20 bucks, and if they're valuable, they're going to go up, and if they're worth 20 bucks, they're going to sell for 20 bucks, and I am okay with that. All right, I really love the colors of those, though. Um, all right. Next, art glass swirls with scalloped edge. This one I found a little fascinating. And now my instinct on this when I saw the pictures was that it could be Sabino glass. This, I don't know, what, like translucent, opalescent looking thing is uh, like Sabino does that. But now I look at it, it's not the right color. For Sabino. Sabino is uh, not this yellow. It's, well, let me show you what Sabino glass looks like. It's one of my all time favorite glass, and I did never started collecting it because I knew I would not be able to afford it. So let me show you what Sabino glass looks like. So you can see it is absolutely a spectacular glass, in my opinion. Uh, and it is very, very expensive glass. But you can see, well, maybe it does. Now I'm looking going, hmm, does kind of have a yellowing to it. I wonder, could this be a piece of Sabino? I guess it's not out of the question. I guess it's not out of the question. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to put in vase just to see if I can find anything the same shape. Yeah, and I can't, let's look at, I mean, if I could attribute this to Sabino, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Huh, let's see, nothing. Yeah, so um, what I'm gonna do is put in what I do know, opalescent glass vase. And I'm just going to put this ribbon in. Otherwise, I'm going to get like a whole ton of results just to see if something comes up. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah, it's better than better than most of these results. But let's look at solds. Forgot my screen's really big, so things are... Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing. So the ribbon part is what's throwing it off. Um, of course, now I'm going to get Sabino. So, and I'm going to, well, let me put pink because I know it has pink in it. So I'm just really looking, not necessarily for the exact same piece. I am looking for the same style at this point. And I am really not finding anything. Oh, you guys think? Those little shakers, well, they're not shakers. Um, were she I don't think they're sheep. They had a long puppy dog tail. Yep, no, I'm not finding I'm not finding anything like it. So you know what that means? I kind of get to oh, Fenton did. Fenton did something like this. Hmm. You know what? So that has me go dig a little deeper. I'm going to go Fenton opalescent glass vase. 
oh, we need to put the clue. Let's see. I don't know if I'd call this yellow or, well, let's use pink. No, pink's going to bring me up all kinds of stuff. Wow. Let's put in white or yellow. Mm. I'm going to go with clear. Let's see. Let's see if we got anything with clear. You know, it's kind of got a Fenton feel to it, and it's got a Fenton edge to it. I wouldn't be surprised if this was Fenton. I might have to see, and this is where, oops, where am I? This is where I can go into one of the groups of Fenton people who already know this stuff like the back of their hand and say, is this Fenton? Um, isn't Sabina made with gold, which gives the yellow tinge? I don't know. I've never heard that. I guess that's possible. I guess that's possible. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, you guys are still talking about the little dogs. Yeah, I agree. It's not It's not Clarice Cliff. I don't know where they got that from. I don't know. But um, this piece could be a valuable piece. I don't know. Although it has... So it's got some, I don't know if you can see that. See these little dots? That's in the glass. So those would be manufactured defects. So that to me says it's not Sabino. Sabino glass would not have done this. That can happen in a Fenton piece, though, for sure. Now, here's the Pontal, um, which also can be the clue. It's got, you know, kind of a rough, broken off Pontal. So this one, um, I will probably post this to my Fenton peeps and see. Otherwise, without knowing anything about it, I paid $14. I would list this at $50 and just describe it as keywords and let somebody find it. But what, I'm, what I do on a piece like that is rule out it being something like Sabino that would be worth hundreds of dollars. So I would like even put it on auction first just to make sure. All right. Cobalt ceramic and signed floral oh that uh, I think okay I paid five dollars for this piece it um, the signature on the bottom is like it's like just a an L I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Is it coming through? It's it's not really a signature, um, but this is a nice, just a little cobalt blue jar, and it does have a lid. <coughs> Boom. And I paid $5 for it, which I would have paid that for it at a thrift store. It does have age on it. It's almost a majolica, but not quite. It's not done super good. It was not a real high-end maker, but I can tell it's got some age by the yellowing of the base and also just the wear on the actual rim that sits on a surface. Um, again, I'm thinking this is about a $30 to $40 piece, and I would list it as such. Not a very exciting piece, um, but it was 5 bucks. That's why I bought it. Oh, this one, though, is exciting to me. It's not a valuable piece, but it is something that is my heart's desire, which is EAPG. And I have start. Okay, so I collect a pattern called a Gillander Deer and Dog. It's made by Gillander. It's called Deer and Dog. Uh, it's really super rare. I mean, I have a watch alert on eBay and I only get a new piece comes up listed maybe once every couple of months if that so it's super rare and I love it and I'm just noticing this has a chip which they didn't tell me um, so I started seeing this other deer pattern and I believe this is deer deer and pine or deer and oak I don't know I have to look Actually, these are gazelles, so I'm not even sure what this is now. Um, but anyway, I guess I should show you. I always forget to do that. I forget to show you what I'm talking about. 
Um, but it is blue EAPG, which really intrigued me because you don't see a lot of blue EAPG. And EAPG stands for Early American Pressed Glass. Uh, so I, I really do like this piece and I have to toy with whether I'm going to keep it. Oh, I wish I had my black. I bought a black light, but it's in my purse because I took it with me yesterday. Um, this piece would glow like crazy. I don't know if you can even see, see the edge where my hand is. Look how the, the difference that it, it's going to glow. This little, this little baby's going to glow. Um, value on this piece. Let's see. I paid 11. So let's, I mean, those do look like, those do look like gazelles or antelope. So let's see what comes up for that. Oh, you're saying that last piece was a biscuit jar. You know what? It very well could be a biscuit jar. I do like that word. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Let me share my screen and let's go with EA. I'm going to just go. What did I just do? I hit something I wasn't supposed to hit. Okay. Let's go with blue EAPG. Let's just do that first. So you can see there's not a whole lot of results. Um, Ooh, menagerie. Do, 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 do. I'm just kind of right now glancing through to see if I see, and I don't see anything with gazelles on it. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to take out the blue. I'm going to put EAPG gazelles. No results. Sometimes you need to go over to the actives first. No results. Okay. Let's put antelope. Oops. How about if we spell it correctly? Still nothing. So I'm going to take out the EAPG and I'm going to put gazelle glass tray. And I'm looking for the pattern. Nothing. Hmm. I don't want to put just gazelle glass. Let's put, let's try one more time. Let's put antelope glass tray. Nothing. So this is one that uh, is a little bit of a mystery and I might go do a Google search and I never do these like live on camera just in case something wonky comes up, but I promise I'll share as soon as sell glass tray. So I am doing an image search on Google and I do do that. There you go. Um, I mean, and there's like a lot of stuff here. So maybe if I don't put tray, maybe if I put dish, maybe there's no trays out there. Yeah, still. And this is where Google image search starts driving me crazy. And I know you're talking about, you know, you put the picture in and have it come up, but if it's not coming up this way, it's probably not going to give me. <sighs> Let's see. I actually, on this item, I'm probably going to resort to my EAPG book, which is usually right by my side, but um, I have, oh, here it is. Okay. If you're going to delve at all in EAPG, this is the Bible right here. This is the book you want to have for EAPG. It is divided up by, you know, like the motif. So fruits are all together. I'm going to animals. And I'm going to see if I can very quickly determine if I can get to the animals. Okay. Animals and birds. And then everything has, you know, all of the little black and white drawn pictures to show you what it looks like. I am looking for gazelles. Give me some gazelles. Give me some gazelles. There's goats. There's something with goats on it. There's something with squirrels on it. Who knew? Who knew? That's uh, what is that? That is squirrel with nut. There you go. 
Oh, there is. No, no, those are like all African animals, but there's no antelope in that one. And then here's all our deer. So you kind of have to look at your item. Look at, I swear, I thought these were, maybe they are, maybe they are deer. I don't know. Are they like, I'm going to show them to you this way. What do you think? Deer or antelope? Now I'm confused. I thought they were antelope, but maybe they are deer. Maybe they are deer. Maybe I'm going out, out of my mind because they are actually deer. Now what I'm looking for in this book is this border. I'm in all the like the deer patterns and I'm looking for that specific border, which I'm not, not really finding. Oh wait, oh wait, three deer. Could it be three deer? Maybe, okay, let's look. Okay, I know. I that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you just need to change your Let's see. Ah ha ha. It's deer and pine. Oh my goodness. That's a crazy. Even I can get off on the right path. On the I mean on the wrong path. So it is by McKee. It is called Deer and Pine. It is from 1886 and it's not very valuable, I see. Go to solds. So what I want to do, okay, I'm going to put in beer and pine. I leave out the and, B-A-P-G. Let's see what the highest pieces have sold for. Not a whole lot. And here it is in clear, 25, 20. Well, you know what? This just says I get to keep it. It goes into my collection because I like it. And actually, this could be a pattern that I could actually afford to collect. Um, I've had to stop buying pieces of my deer and dog because I am putting everything into my new nonprofit that I can. So I have stopped my little personal. See, I was thrown because on here they told me gazelle. So I was searching gazelle. Duh. All right, I bought I bought a rug for nine bucks, which I can't show you. Um, oh, I bought two wooden lighted corner china cabinets um, for under twenty bucks each. Those will go down to the booth, obviously. Uh, oh, I have a Yadro Swan. Now, here again, this is funny. So, this was listed as a Yadro Swan. Before I even say anything, everybody tell me what you see here. Tell me what you see. Yes, it is. It actually is Yadro. You see there, there's the Yadro mark. Is that focusing? Focus, focus, focus on this. Focus on this, not on my face. There we go. There's the Yadro. Uh, it's a goose. Yes, it's a goose. It's totally a goose. I, I must confess that I was researching Yadro Swan as I was in the heat of the moment to purchase this, okay? So this is what I saw. I went to bid on this. Now I knew it wasn't one of these really high priced ones, everything I was going down to like, okay, where's just a little swan? Come on, Yadro Swanny Swanny. And I'm going and going, okay, 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 okay. This is a good buy. But now let's go back up. Let's put in Yadro Goose. And let's see if my purchase is okay. Now we know it doesn't have the lady with it. So sorry, I'm going a little fast because uh, it's got to get past all of these ones that I know it absolutely is not. I'm trying to just get down to an individual goose. Okay, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. It's not that one, but that's a little single goosey goose. And there's the goosey goose pair. All right, getting closer, getting closer. 
Yadras surprisingly have held their value over the years, unlike Hummels. Um, people still fight like crazy over Yadro. I paid $12 for the goose. $12 for the goose. I still think I am in really good shape, even at the prices going as low as we are now. Goose, goose, goose. I'm not finding this goose. I'm finding it in a pair. And sometimes that can be good because if somebody broke one, they're going to be looking just to replace the one. We're still in the $40 range, which I would be okay with. I was thinking 30 to 40 when I bought it. Boy, this one seems to be popular by itself. Oh, that's even a the now. This is not a now. This is the regular Yadro. Looks like it came in a set of three. Oh, yeah, it came in a set of three. So this would be a replacement piece for someone. And I will list it at $29.99. Even though I see that you can get all three. Funny thing is, if somebody just wants the one, they don't want the extra one. It's weird how that works. So you can actually get more by separating them than selling them together sometimes because people are funny that way. They don't want an extra piece to deal with. Yeah, and I'm still, I'm not even finding this one sold by itself, which is interesting. Am I making you guys dizzy? I'm like, I'm really trying to like find, I'm just land on the one that it is and there it isn't, it isn't there. So worst case scenario, okay, here we go. There he is, you know, 20 bucks, $13 shipping. That is way too much shipping. Um, I'm going to list him probably for $29.99. Just based on that result, I will list him at $29.99. I paid 12. Good profit margin. I'll take it. But he's a goose. Oh, swan. Poor little guy. Had his hopes up for just a short time. All right, let's see this thing. I don't know. I don't know why I bought this. I think it looked better in the pictures than it is. Um, this is just art glass. It is not signed that I can see. Now, some people would get this and say it's Murano, and this is definitely not Murano. One of the ways you can tell it's not Murano is if you look at the pontal. Puntal is the bottom where it was blown. Um, and you can see see that cloudiness. Murano glass is never cloudy. It is always like the same color as the glass. Or if it's a clear on the bottom piece, it's going to be clear. There's no cloudiness in Murano pontals. So that tells me this is not Murano. Does it mean that it's not quality glass? It's actually... This has a nice feel to it. It's got a good weight to it. Um, and this was probably done, I don't know if it's mid-century, but it's close to that time. I'm thinking more like 60s, you know, based on the design. And this piece I would call um, art glass, what would I call that, modeled, modeled? Swirl, I don't know. I have to kind of think about what words I would use. What words would you use for that? Um, you've got to think of the words that somebody's going to type in to find a piece. You know, oh, I want a, a, a retro modeled art glass vase. There we go. Um, the colors are really interesting with the yellows and the browns. So uh, I'll list this one probably at $39.99. All right, so there's that. I bought some pieces of art which did not make their way up here. But I got this little cream and sugar that have little seahorses on them. Oops, little seahorses on them, which I just thought was amazing. They are, oh, I know this brand, Shepherd. You know, my daughter's trying to call me. My daughter, who knows I do this show every Monday, 
I think she thought I'd be done by two, but we don't get done at two. We go till we go. All right, this is, look, everybody's trying to call me now. Look at that, kids' school's trying to call me now. Everybody's calling me now. Forgot to put my phone on mute. All right, so this is, come on, focus, focus. Let's see, Shepherd. Come on, focus, zero in. Come on. I hate when the cameras don't focus. Come on. Do it. Just do it. There you go. There we go. There we go. Just wanted you to see the mark. Shafford. Um, the color and the fact that it has seahorses is really desirable, even though these little cream and sugars don't, you know, bring a whole lot of money. Um, but let's look. Oops. Share my screen. Share my screen. Shafford. Cream and sugar. Oh, I should have put creamer and sugar, which I will do. Change our results there a little bit. Okay, so apparently they make a kitty cat one that's quite popular. This is a majolica. This is not majolica. And there's not many results. So now I'm going to go over to actives just to get an idea what this brand is selling for. And still, I cannot find anything like what I have. Very interesting. I know it's Shafford and I know it's a cream and sugar. So there's no sense searching anything differently. And based on these results, I will put this at auction because it's, I don't know that it's particularly rare, but there's none listed right now. So it does seem quite desirable and uh, we will start the bidding at $29.99. Now, that would be a price I'd be happy with if it sold for that. And if it is a valuable sought after, somebody really has to have it piece and I have two people looking for it, it could go up. But at least I give it a try and I have no regrets then if I sell it quickly at 30 bucks. And on that, what did I say? I paid seven. I paid seven. All right, I bought a little table. All right, this is a brand that you do want to be looking for. And I'm, I'm just checking right now, make sure it's not broken. So this is a Mackenzie Childs. I do not understand why this brand sells for so much stinking money. Um, it is not appealing to me at all, but I just sold a Tureen for $275. So I do look for Mackenzie Childs. Um, that's weird. It's not even made that great. That's what's so funny. So this appears to be the same pattern as the Tureen that I sold. I think I can show you the Tureen. I didn't sell it on eBay, but I had it on eBay. So it should be showing up in the ended listings. Let me, let me just show you. And they make this turtle Tureen that is to die for. That's on my wish list somewhere. Someday. Here, I'll show you should show you, right? Look at, look at this. Look at this. Someday I must, I must have one. If I could find one of those in the wild, I would be, I would be so torn because you can see what it sells for. And yet I would want to keep it. I would want to keep it with all of my heart. <laughs> I'm trying to find my listing in here. Yeah, it's not even in here. I don't even know why it's not in here, but it looked like this one. So this is actually the, the one that I, I sold mine through Cherish, but it's was just like this. And I really was dreading, 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 dreading having to ship that. And I am so thankful it sold for local pickup. And, and the way, you know, I wish eBay would do this. Um, the way Cherish handles that is if someone is going to pick the item up locally, they give the buyer a code 
And so when you meet the buyer to do the exchange, the buyer gives you the code and that's how you get paid. That's how Cherish knows the item was accepted and you're good to go. Now, if eBay would do something like that, that would be really cool. Really, really cool. Oh, so Kathy says that it's actually Shafford. I don't think it's Stafford. It's, sh yeah, it's definitely an H. So it is Shafford, but you're saying it shows up as under the C? Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, that would make sense. Oh, okay. There's a set on Etsy listed at $28. Believe the pattern is called Under the Sea. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Yay, yay, yay. I, I hardly ever go over to Etsy and look for anything. It's not bad. Okay. So now what I want to show you is the glass. Mackenzie Child's glass plate. And you can see here's our results. Oh, I did not select sold. I'm just in completed. So let's go to sold because it matters what's sold, not what's listed. And is this 10 inch? Oh, where's my measuring tape? Where's my measuring tape? Where's my measuring tape? Here it is. I'm measuring this real quick. <gasps> no, it's nine and a half inches. It's nine and a half inches. So it's not quite as big as this one but it's close. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Circus, circus glass. So from this, I can tell. So this is a combination of $85 and 90 cents. And this, uh, where's the next one here? 50. So we're at like 60. So it sold somewhere between 70 and $80 for just the single glass plate on the really bad background. <laughs> Here's one Harlequin. Okay, $50. $50. Okay, I will take $50 because I only paid. I did pay $30. I did pay $30. Just because I knew Mackenzie Childs was crazy good. Um, but I will turn $30 into $50 and be very happy with that. That's a 20, that's my $20 profit, guys. It's my $20 profit. And I have one last thing on here. Actually, I have more than one because I skipped something to come back to. Oh! This is Northwood Spanish Lace. This is uh, opalescent. This is a clear opalescent or a white opalescent. It is not the color that I collect. I collect blue. But I knew this pattern because of my own collection, and it's a very desirable piece. I believe this is late 1800s glass. I'm trying to look on here and go like, what did I pay for this? No barking. My dogs need to stop barking. So I don't murder them. All right. I'm not even sure what I paid for this. I had a couple of combined lots, and it's probably in one of those. So I'm really going to strangle her. I really am. Dog, stop your barking. She back talks. All right, let's go. Northwood Spanish lace. Whoop, fat fingers. All right, so here you can see what this goes for. I have this one, and here is this one. Now, what I can tell you is I know I didn't pay more than 15 bucks for this, uh, and I am quite happy to sell it for 100 That will make me very, very happy. Yep. I'm trying to get myself back on screen here. So that is why knowing glass can be very lucrative because this is not marked anywhere on here. This actually came from an antiques dealer. Didn't know what it was. So just learning some of these patterns. And I learned them through looking up things that I bought. I would buy a piece of blue opalescent glass because I liked it. 
and I would research till I found the pattern. And as I'm researching to find that pattern, I'm seeing other patterns and I'm noting, you know, oh, this sells for really good money. And then you start being on the lookout for those. All right. The last thing I want to share is um, some transferware that I'm super excited about. I'm looking to see what I paid for these. So I paid $26 for all of this. Um, so Anne-Marie is asking, does the white sell as well as the other colors? Not usually, but there are exceptions. As in the case of the, this Spanish lace, it is one of those really, everybody loves it. And Northwood is one of the better brands as well. So it's going to depend on the maker and like Fenton. Fenton opalescent glass is probably the least valuable of all of it. So I tend to stay away from Fenton unless it's just something I want to add to my collection, which I usually don't. All right. I'm going to move a little chair over so I can get to these pieces without falling out of my chair and breaking anything. Oh, I did get a new chair. I'm so proud of myself. I actually bought a, an, a desk chair off of Amazon and it came in a box and I had to build it myself. And um, Noah usually does my little building projects, but he was gone to his dad's house. So I built a chair and actually it's, it's quite comfy, I must say, but I don't want to lean back too hard just in case. <laughs> Okay, so I have got three pieces. Now, this lid, I don't know if the, which piece the lid goes on. I think it might go on. I think it might go on this piece here. I know I just switched the lid, although that doesn't seem to be fitting all that well either. Let's see. Is that good? No? It's almost like the lid is warped. Anyway, so I've got three pieces of this that I bought for $26. And now these are not marked. This is again, another one of those cases where you just need to kind of know what you're looking at. Stay. What it does have on it. Okay. This piece just has roses. Where's the piece? Oh, they all do. Okay. Had to look for a minute. So the way they sold it was as Asiatic pheasant. And yes, I'll show you the one that's the best marked. It does have pheasants on it, right? You can see the pheasant there. I guess it would help if I didn't have it upside down. You can see the pheasants a little better. But they're kind of like just kind of blended into it. And this is transferware. This is not painted, but this is super old stuff. So I did a search based on the words that they gave me. which were Asiatic pheasant. And I'll just put in that. Let's see what we get. Now we've got Royal Stafford and here we go. We got the blue and white. And that's basically what I was looking at, the blue and white. So here, this is a platter. Platters are always gonna be higher dollar in this stuff because those are the pieces that got broken. Um, bigger pieces didn't make it as well as the smaller pieces but we go down a little more a little more a little more you can see different makers made it but you can see the pattern there now they're calling this one uh, 1882 to 1902 Dalton's Asiatic pheasants covered dish that looks like what I have which was what I suspected that this was antique um, it doesn't really look like this Royal Stafford as much as it did that Dalton's. And here's one just says Victorian. They didn't put, you know, what it, what it was, just called it a serving dish for $55. Here's a bowl, $55. This is a flat plate. This is a little deceiving because you can see $46 worth of shipping in there. Um, here we go. $45. So I feel pretty comfortable. I won't put a maker's name because I don't know. I don't know which maker did this. I'm going to list it as blue and white Asiatic pheasants transfer wear. Um, I know it's antique. I mean, it's just, you can just tell it's antique. 
there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is old, old stuff. So I will list these probably in like the, the smaller ones, maybe like $49.99 each. The one, whichever one I choose to put the lid on, that one will probably be like $59.99. And the larger bowl will probably be $59.99. So all told, that's like $150 for a $26 purchase. So that's why, I mean, I see a lot of sellers are like, oh, I could never spend that much. Um, oh, I'm afraid to go over, you know, $10 for something. And if you want to get really serious about making money in this business, you got to come out of that comfort. <laughs> All the, the sellers are pretty much in that comfort zone and you want to grow beyond that. So you, you learn something, you learn it well, and you start looking for it. And then once you find that, you start finding something else and then you start getting that and so on and so on. And you build and build and build and build in your knowledge base so you can go out there and make stink loads of money. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Chat has been going fast. So Kathy says it's not a 20 when you take away the fees. Now, in essence, that's very true, but um, generally I can price to where the fee is, is covered and I'm still making between 15 and $20 a piece. So it averages out. Remember, I, I don't know if you were here at the beginning. I kind of said I'm shooting for an average. So if it goes a little below that after you take out the fees and everything, that's okay um, because I sell enough stuff with the big, big profit margins that balance everything out. So it's a balance. It's a balance and an average. I mean, you guys have seen me sell 8 and $9 stuff just to get it sold. So it's definitely just an average. All right. What questions do you guys have for me? We have about eight minutes left. I'm just going to open it up. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. I got quite a few pieces of that in a lot box of glass. Oh, what did, of this, of, of this transferware? Ooh. I, you know what? They don't do it enough out here. I am dying to go across the country to some of the auctions where they just put these box lots together and sell like everything in the box. Oh, be still my heart. I, that's my dream is to just load up a trailer and drive and buy stuff. I would love to do that someday. Oh, you are amazed that I know Mata Ortiz Pottery. I lived in Tucson. Uh, so Mata Ortiz was pretty abundant. And when I worked at an auction house down in Tucson, I actually learned a lot about the Southwest Pottery. Yep. I, I, I did quite a bit of buying and selling of, of Native American pottery back in the day. Yep. You need to know how to ship odd big dishes. Are you watching my shipping videos? Uh, I don't always ship, you know, big dishes and things, but I ship a lot of oddball stuff and I always explain how I do it. And the size of the item, just that's just a difference in like the box, but like today, I shipped eight plates together. Yes, you will see that tomorrow's video. I will have that out tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. I love box lots. I love box lots. Love them. Um, at the auction house in Tucson, I started out as a buyer there before I started working for them. And the way they, they were a, a high-end auction house. So nothing got out on the main floor unless it had a potential value of $40 or more. That's how I kind of learned to gauge what I was buying and selling. I kind of used that same mentality, only I'm at a 20. Um, but theirs was 40. That's what they, where they needed to be at. They needed to try to be sure that each lot that sold, sold for at least $40 or averaged out. So at the beginning of the auction, what would happen was they had a room that was filled with box lots of all the stuff that didn't make it out onto the main floor. And literally, they would pick a section 
of, you know, like, okay, let's say there's like eight to 10 like flats of stuff. And then they would run it choice, meaning your bid was for one of those boxes of stuff. And they would do that until it got down to $20 a box. At that point, they said, okay, everything that's left. And sometimes there'd be four or five boxes of stuff left and then you could just buy it all. Oh my gosh, there was so much cool stuff in that. So then when I started working for them and really understood, you know, what was going in those boxes, it was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, anything with a little chip, a little crack, a little, it was a one-off. They didn't know what it was. I mean, there was so much good stuff that went through that way. Yeah, I miss, I miss an auction house like that. We do not have a good auction house here in Vegas. We do not. I have a friend who wants to open one, but so far... They have not done it, and I wish they would. All right. Ooh, good question. Good question. Free shipping or calculated? Calculated. I used to be the free shipping queen. I was one of the first ones on board when eBay made the push. And the reason for that was that Amazon was pushing the free shipping. People buying online were expecting free shipping because of Amazon. Now we are about a decade later and people no longer expect free shipping. Amazon has started charging again, shipping, it's becoming more normal. All the other, you know, one-off sites out there, people pay shipping. People are much more relaxed now paying shipping. And so um, when I started back up last fall, I decided I was doing calculated because it was way easier for my bookkeeping. Free shipping is just, it's its more work to take it to the bookkeeping level because now you got to look at your sale. You have to separate out the shipping and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I, and I love it because my customers are not going to get overcharged for shipping if they live near me. They can actually buy the item and pay less than somebody on the East Coast. And um, I'm okay with that because that shipping was coming out of and comes out of the seller's pocket if they do free shipping. So it's all good. It's a, it's a pretty level playing field that way because the shipping is really based on where you're at. So good question. Yeah. And I've always, always, always been about if you run it on auction, you charge shipping so that you can start at the lowest price possible. Yeah. Oh, Rita, where's here? Where's here? I'm coming to your auctions. All right. Where do I go find out about a pick I found in an estate sale? Well, you can join the Niche to Profit group on Facebook and post a picture and we can see if we can help you with that. All right. I sent you a counter bid. Having fun. Just received my first package from you. Love you. Oh, thank you, Adna. Yay. Yes, I love doing the like, do a little back and forth. I'll always go as low as I possibly can. But it always helps if you let me know you were one of my viewers, too. That's a big influence on me lowering the price even more. Because I appreciate you. Right. How long have I been doing this? Well, uh, I joined eBay October 1st, 1998. And I can tell you exactly where I was when I found out about eBay. I was raising thoroughbred horses. And I had an arena and I would hitch up my grading bar to my truck and I would drive around the arena and flatten it out and get rid of the rocks and all. So I'm driving around and I got the radio on and here comes this advertisement talking about this thing called eBay. It's like, what? That sounds like my kind of place. Um, so I finished up and I ran in the house and I fired up the computer and went to ebay.com and I was, I was in heaven from that moment on because I have grown up in the buying and selling world. Um, before I was doing eBay, before eBay came along, I was going and buying things at auctions and selling them at yard sales and, and just however I could and flea markets and that sort of thing. So eBay made my life so much easier it was amazing. Yeah. So I, and I've spent my life 
in the thrifting and antiques world. I had an aunt who volunteered at a thrift store up in Carpinteria, California. And every summer I looked forward to it. Like you can't believe I would get to go work in the thrift store with her, which to me, I, I it was just, it was heaven back then. And it's heaven to me now when I get the opportunity. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into this. So all my life, I can pretty much say, but 20, this is my 22nd year on eBay. Yeah. So Tri-State Picker Mom says, I only do free ship on first class or media mail. Yeah, I don't even do it on those things. I don't even do it on those things. Um, calculated shipping is more expensive. More expensive than what? So free shipping is you're just burying your shipping cost into the cost of the item. So it's not like you're pulling a fast one or anything. It's all a psychological marketing thing. You know, some people just like to know a flat price of what they're paying and be done with it. But at the end of the day, they're paying, let's say they pay $30 free shipping. They're paying the same as somebody who paid $20 with $10 shipping. It's all the same price paid. And um, so it's, it's just a matter of I don't have to figure out the highest possible case of shipping is what I used to do. I used to figure out zone eight and bury that in. Now I don't have to do that. So, yeah. Oh, South Dakota. I've never been to South Dakota. I might, uh, I need to get that. You have snow there. So I don't want to, I don't want to come after it snows. So I'll have to do a trip, you know, before snow or after snow melts, which is better before, before the snow hits, or after the snow melts, which is better? Let's see. I'm looking for your questions. Looking for your questions. Wow, 7:30 a.m. Where are you, Karen? Where are you? I'm going. I'm thinking you are not in the USA. Um, ooh, either Bullhead City or Kingman has box auctions. There's an antique mall in Golden Valley. They all buy. <gasps> I will have to check that out. Thank you for that tip. Yay. First time I ever went to a thrift shop, it was in the 70s. Someone had, turn, had turned in their wooden leg. Oh, that, that's yeah, just odd. Kentucky, here are the names of artists you look for when you thrift. Should I look for those as well? It, it depends. Um, so that's my whole thing about being the niche lady and teaching niche. You know, niche is really about what is it that interests you you can dive into and expand on and then form a base of customers that likes that same thing. So you may not find the same things I do. You may not like the same things I do. So I'm really all about, you know, find that thing that makes you want to get up and do your work every day. I mean, this is a, this is a business we choose. It's not like we're going to work for somebody else and they're setting the rules and they're setting the, the protocol and the, you know, all the, you know, the corporate stuff. You get to choose. You get to decide how to make your business fun and exciting and enjoyable day in and day out. Because I tell you, not all of it is enjoyable. So you have to have stuff that motivates you to, you know, get to it. This, this stuff excites me. Like, I love researching. I, I mean, that's why I decided to do this show in a, like a research format because I love it. And I want to hopefully teach you guys to do it in a way that causes you to love it too. I mean, it's, it brings me joy. It's like the Marie Kondo method of, you know, starting your own business. You know what? So I love Katie and Vicki. I love Katie and Vicki. They're actually, they're not neighbor neighbors, but you know, we're in the same, we're in the same city and uh, they, they say they push free shipping. I think I don't, I wouldn't say they push it. I think they advocate for free shipping and it works really well for them and their business model. So I'm all about finding what works best for your business model, whatever that may be. And I think they would say the same thing too. I hate cold weather too. I don't do cold weather. I, I, tortoise is my spirit animal. 
you know, they go about mid-November, they go into their burrow and they don't come out until April. I wish. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Yes, yes, yes. All right. I don't, you know what? I, I, I don't give up. I find a way. There's always a way. There's always a way to make things work. Always, always, always. So this is what a very good friend of mine uh, advised. So we are all going to have those meltdown moments. We are all going to have something that either makes us crazy angry, crazy upset, super sad, super depressed, whatever that thing is, whatever that extreme emotion. And the advice is when you feel that coming on, set a timer, give yourself five minutes to feel it. Give yourself five minutes to just cry, scream, whatever it is. Like that lets your brain process it instead of like pushing it aside, pretending it's not bothering you, all that stuff. Give yourself that five minutes to process it. And then you can take a deep breath and then move on, solve the problem, get through the grief, whatever it is. And that actually works really well, really, really well. I, and I, I can't say that I'm always like super good at it. You know, um, my life pretty much turned upside down three years ago. I mean, I had my whole happily ever after mapped out and I didn't really have to work hard. I had a husband who, you know, had a six figure income. And if I wanted a new car, we could go get a new car. We wanted a nice house. I mean, I had it all, um, but I didn't have it all. I was, I was giving up personal peace, you know, to be in that relationship. Um, I was staying for the kids and I had my plan that when the kids, you know, got grown that then I would decide to leave. And well, I didn't get to make that choice. Um, he made that choice by taking off with our 32 year old store manager in a business that we started. And um, that kind of not only did I lose my marriage at that point, but I lost a business that was supposed to be a multi million dollar business. And um, I, I, yeah, that was like, that was big. I went into some heavy depression. And I just you know, some of you know, I like just, I just like went off the grid. I wasn't doing any videos or coaching or teaching or nothing. I just, I didn't even do eBay for a while. I just disappeared into my little depressed shell. And, um, yeah, about, about a year and a half ago, I decided to come out of that and get my life back on track. And, and here we are. Yay. So I switch out of free shipping and my sales improved. People are looking at the final price now and not considering shipping. I think Poshmark has a big influence. Amen. Yes, that is exactly what's happening is other sites are retraining people's shopping patterns. That's one thing about this business is there is no like it's never going to change. You have to be willing to to go with it. Just go with the changes and the stuff that happens. Uh, I want to find something I know will sell. What should I start with? That is like such a huge open-ended question. So start with things maybe around you and just start researching. Research the way I do here on the show. Sort by highest first and sold. Is it something that sells? As you're looking for that item, look for other items that are in that same sort of a search. See what's selling. And then again, you know, what do you enjoy? What what do you really want to dig into and learn? Yes, yes. Um, Katie and Vicky do a lot of clothing. Yep, yep, they sure do. Da, da, da. You guys, it's, you're talking fast. I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to get, get over here, but I'm miss, I know I'm missing some of your questions. I think I'm talking to myself. No, I'm having a staff meeting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, hello, Danica. 
Yeah, my mom wanted a Danny. So my real name is actually Deneen. But every time I say that, people usually go, what? What was it? Denise? So now I'm Danny. <laughs> As a kid, I would never let my mom call me Danny in front of my friends or anything. Oh, I thought it was horrible. Now it's my name. Uh, let's see. Ah, something just jumped on me here. Let's see. I'm trying. I'm trying to get all of these comments. I love your comments. Uh, what is an, a manageable item count for an eBay store for one person? Well, I am trying to get to 1,000 listings, but I keep selling stuff. So I can tell you right now by myself, and I am totally doing this by myself, and I would say my eBay is part-time because the other part of my time is in making my videos and editing videos and dealing with all of that. Um, so a thousand items is, you know, it's, it's really doable. I am right now. In fact, I have an interview with someone in just a little while, uh, to hire a lister because that's what I can't keep up on is the listing. So I, I want like three or 4,000 items listed. Uh, it depends on how much space you have, what you're selling. I have right now, um, one, two, three, four, I have five, four, four. Four big shelves in the garage that are full of stuff, and I still have room to add some more. And then I have about six big tubs that have like the soft items in them against the wall. And I have I have room, you know, to put up at least four more shelves out there. So I can I can double what I have really easily. So yeah. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, thank you guys. I'm like, I'm getting your comments that from what I said, like a little bit ago, uh, a vintage temple jar full of crackling all over it. Afraid to list it because of fear of shipping. If you're watching your shipping video. I think I'm going to try it. Yeah. You know, and this is why I'm doing the shipping videos. I want to get you guys over that fear. So worst case scenario is of something breaking. So we take measures that we can to avoid that. And the biggest one is on something that's super breakable. Well, number one, depending on the value, you might want a double box. So, you know, bubble wrap and wrapping up all the pieces like crazy and then putting your cushioning. And then, you know, if you really want to add that extra layer, do an extra layer. Something else, if you have like a super valuable item, don't be afraid to go pay 20 bucks to go have like the UPS store package it up for you. Um, I've done that in the past too. I do that in some of my bigger pieces of art that I just don't want to deal with. It is worth my time and hassle to go pay them, you know, 20 bucks of my profit to go and package up. But yeah, that stuff, it's, it's totally shippable. Oh yeah. You guys are having storms like on the East coast, aren't you? So hard when it's like 110 and blazing sun here to even imagine that. Okay. You want to sell mugs, plates, containers that are on eBay. I'm from India. Any suggestions? I could have sworn that there is an eBay India. Is there not an eBay India? I thought there was. But if not, I'm sure there is a way for you to sell on eBay.com. You just have to state, you know, where the items are located, where you're shipping from. So your customer has a uh, an expectation of how long it will take to get to them. But yeah, just... Go for it. Just go for it. Uh, what would I recommend for someone that wants to get into selling mugs? Do your research. Go do a search for mug and sort by highest solds and start familiarizing yourself with what's selling and what price point. And here's the thing. If you niche and specialize in a particular thing, you can get to where a mug that somebody else can only get five bucks for, you might be able to get 10 bucks for because your marketing is going to bring a customer to you more readily. So, yeah. You're an avid paper crafter, card maker, and scrapbooker. Is there a market on eBay for that? 
I have never looked in that, but I imagine there is. I mean, with literally billions of listings and millions of buyers, I would definitely look at it and uh, go for it. Now, if you're making stuff yourself, Etsy might be a better venue for you, though. They, they tend to um, take care of the handcrafter. I'm just reading my mother's comment. This is my mom. Everybody say, hi, mom. Um, she always wanted a Danny. Danny, before you write. Uh, yeah, you're telling me you wanted a boy, huh? Just kidding. I'm the only girl. Um, yeah, there's a lot of influx happening with, I think I'm caught up, caught, bleh, caught up now. A lot of in, in, uh, influx isn't the right word. Uh, turmoil? turmoil happening within the USPS. I am cautiously optimistic standing on the sideline here with you all that, you know, sometimes we don't know that things are coming to a boiling point because it's working for us. You know, we just, we go about our day, we ship our packages, they arrive. And I know there has been problems in the postal service for a very long time. Hence the phrase going postal. Um, when did that, when were, when were those postal um, shoot 'em ups that happened? Oh gosh, it's been a long time, but you know, workers at the post office have been unhappy for a very long time. There's been problems. They've been losing money. Um, I don't know what year it got done, but they were forced to pre-fund pensions 75 years out. That's really what's crunching them. That's ridiculous. That's that's like putting money away for pensions for people who haven't even been born yet. Um, so the post office has major, major issues that have to be dealt with. And they have switched from being like letter carriers to package carriers and package service. So they really, really need to do some major inward shifts. Now, all that being said, I know there's a political component, which I am not going to get into. And that is something there may be some consequences that we have to endure while this all gets sorted out. But I, as I said, I'm cautiously optimistic that on the other side of all of this, you know, grinding things up that something good's going to come out of it. They're going to get into the 21st century. Is that right? Are we in the 21st century? Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> I had to think for a minute there. And um, it's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Shipping is not going away. There will be a way for us to get our packages to our customers no matter what. And eBay is going to make sure of that. Because uh, obviously eBay's entire health comes from packages being able to get delivered to people. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And you are protected right now from any delays in shipping. eBay is not going to ding you for late shipments. They are setting better expectations for buyers. They can do a little more, um, but they're working on it. They're working on it. 2003. Yeah. Okay. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Yep. 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 So Sandy says, I sold for a while, but had trouble getting my items found. Any suggestions? I still have inventory. So right now, the way the eBay search algorithm works is um, the longer your item is up, the more it goes down in search, I call it search juice. Okay. That's my term. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using a title that is what people would be looking for. So don't stuff your titles with any extra words. So really look at, you know, if I'm, I mean, if I'm looking for this dog, you've got this dog for sale and I'm looking for this dog as a customer. What I know about this dog is it is a vintage white dog figurine with brown spots. 
So the most important phrasing there is vintage white dog figurine. The with brown spots you may or may not want to put. Um, but really trying to think like your buyer. That's the best way to have your items seen as well as consistent listing. So, uh, you know, listing one or two items a day versus listing 10 items one day a week is better. So just little things you can do to make your stuff come up. You're quitting eBay. Okay, why are you quitting eBay? So this is like, I can't go in depth because I don't know what your store looks like, but come over to the Facebook Niche to Profit Facebook group and let's brainstorm and see why things aren't selling. I over, over the last decade, I have been able to help literally hundreds of people go from, like you say, not selling anything to having thriving businesses that they have to keep up with and hire help. So, I mean, that is a problem we can solve over in the Facebook group. So come on over and post and let's see what we can do before you quit. Yep, yep. Yeah, I get it. It's not just the post office. It's got, I mean, I know there's a lot going on right now. It's a lot going on right now, but it's going to be okay. That's my message. It's going to be okay. And honestly, here's the thing. It is out of our hands. Like there is nothing that worrying about it is going to change, right? We can be proactive. We can stay on top of it as far as, you know, if we need to, you know, send something to a, a senator or, or, or a congressperson and say something, you know, get on the, uh, the eBay, um, Oh gosh, somebody help me here. The, the, what's it called where eBay talks to uh, government channels and sends people to talk in Congress. Like there's a name, there's a thing that you get in on and I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Um, but do what you can and let go of the, the stress and the rest. I mean, honestly put that time spent worrying into just building your business and you're going to be okay. So you have a booth and you juggle items back and forth. Yeah, I, I don't really juggle items back and forth. I actually, um, I will try things that I think will sell better locally for a better price at the booth. Um, and then if they don't sell, I'll bring them home and put them on eBay. But generally booth stuff is booth stuff and eBay stuff is eBay stuff for me. Um, when I had my business, the whole premise of that business was, to combine the two, it was um, we developed a software that actually integrated with eBay so that there was a barcode and when somebody would buy something, they'd come up and scan and it took it off eBay. It's beautiful. And I still I still have that software that I might fire up in some way someday again. But that was the whole idea behind it, to have everything for sale at the same place. So you can do it. Absolutely, Pamela. You want to be a hundred grand a year eBay seller? Do it, do it, do it. You know, uh, it's it's so possible. And you have one sale a month. Yeah, we can look at that, guys. We can look at why that's happening. We can look at why that's happening. Yep. Um, yeah, it's not it's not lobbyists. They they actually have a program that you can get into with eBay. It's a pro I wish I could think of it. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. What are your views on sourcing from other countries? I don't do it. I don't do it. I am a, um, I am a thrifter, auction, yard sale, estate sale person. Uh, that is, I have done wholesale. Um, it's, I just don't enjoy it. I can do it. I can make money with it. I don't enjoy it. Um, I happen to live in the convention capital of, you know, the country. So I don't even have to purchase from out of the country. It, you know, the vendors come here if I wanted to do that, but it's not my thing. I like the treasure hunt, love the treasure hunt. Uh, only been doing this for two months. I watch your packing methods, but why don't you pre-weight and put in the right size box so the buyer knows how much, 
Oh, I absolutely do that. So the way I do that is when I am listing the item, I weigh it. I absolutely, I have a scale sitting right next to me. So I know what my boxes weigh. Um, you know, like the number four in the shoe box weigh about six or seven ounces. And the number seven and some of the larger boxes can weigh almost a pound. So when I am putting the measurements and weight in there, I am thinking of what size box that's going to fit in and how much to add in. And then I do that one to two pounds, two to three pounds, three to four pounds. You know, I give it that, that span. So, yep, yeah, I do that. So um, pirate ship is awesome. So pirate ship, okay, the advantage of pirate ship is if you are not a top rated seller, you're going to get top rated seller rates on pirate ship. But if you're a top rated seller, the rates are pretty much the same. There's a couple places where they're a little cheaper on things, but it's, it's the same discount. Because the post office has discounted tiers that, that they have, like stamps.com has one, and Disha has one. And they're not all the same, but eBay has like the best discount rate that's out there. Well, out there for, you know, us normal people. Amazon, I'm sure, gets a much better deal. You guys like the treasure hunt too, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So um, Rhonda says, the best way to make sure your shipped items are tracked is to have your items scanned in. When you take them to the post office, it makes the Postal Service take credibility for their work. Yeah, I don't. I will not stand in line at the post office. If I, can, I schedule a pickup so that my carrier comes here. And now I have a good carrier. They do scan the packages in when they pick them up. Some carriers take them back to the post office and do it there. Some don't do it at all. Where it does end up getting scanned is the first place it gets processed. It goes through the equipment and boom, it's scanned. It has to be scanned to go, you know, on its way with all the tracking. And yeah, there's still some packages that slip through the cracks and don't get that. But for the most part, it's been pretty good. But I, my post office won't even let us bring in more than 10 packages. We are required to take them around the back to the bulk drop off. So. I just do the carrier pickup. Yeah. Carrier pickup's free. So you guys can totally do that. And you can estimate, like, like right now, I may have some sales come through, but I could schedule a pickup for tomorrow, knowing right now I have three. If I add, you know, a couple to it and it's not exactly, it's okay. They don't get upset with that. Yes, post office comes right to my front porch and picks up my packages. Now that's safe for me to do. Um, you can also give them instructions, ring the bell. It's in a secret place. You, there's a little thing you can tell them, you know, where the packages are. I just put mine out because it's safe. I'm in a very safe gated community and everybody has cameras. So nobody messes around here. All right. My phone is ringing again because it's that time. <laughs> Uh, we've been here for a couple hours now, so I'm going to return some phone calls and get busy with my listing. Yeah, my mom's saying she has great carriers who scan her scheduled pickup packages for the most part only. Uh, the subs can be a little lax in customer service. Yep, yep, I agree. The substitutes can be a problem. Yep, yep, yep. You guys, thank you so much for coming along and uh asking questions and I mean I am all about sharing as much as I can to help you through all of the twists and turns of this crazy eBay seller life and um, and I say eBay seller yeah for those that don't know me I do sell on Poshmark, Etsy and Cherish.com as well as Facebook Marketplace but eBay is my mainstay everything that I list to those other places starts on eBay first well, except for Marketplace. Um, I just had somebody pick up some um, Tiffany style lampshades for $75 from Marketplace. Woohoo! Right. <laughs> so you wash hands. Yes, wash hands. Well, I'm, 
I've already been washing my hands like long before this whole thing started. So I was already a germaphobe of sorts. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you so much. Go be profitable and make it fun. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with a shipping video. All right. Bye.